Wondering why you can't relate to your natal chart or your zodiac sign? Wondering if that means astrology is fake? In this video, we're going to run through three reasons why you might not resonate with your natal chart or with your zodiac sign, sun sign. So if you're interested in learning about why you might not act or feel like your sign and if astrology is a pseudoscience, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. Hi, I'm Marin. I am a professional astrologer, current college student, and witch proudly out of the broom closet. I combine traditional Hellenistic astrological techniques with modern psychological counseling dynamics in order to provide grounded spiritual guidance. And um, you don't need to tell me. I know that the corner of this lash is coming up because we're in quarantine. You know, extensions aren't a thing, so I'm having to go back to the 2016 prom false eyelashes that are just dramatic beyond belief, but they're the only thing I have right now in the inner corner. It's just, it's not coming up. I'm sorry. Okay, we know. Moving, moving on to the astrology. So first we're going to define what astrology is, what a science is, and what a pseudoscience is, so we're really on the same page here. Astrology is the correlation between celestial alignments and earthly events. Personally, I take the stance that astrology is a signal for what's happening on Earth. So it's not causing anything, much like how the clock on the wall is telling you that it's 3 o'clock, but it's no way in hell making it 3 o'clock. And that makes a lot more intuitive sense to me, and when the laws of synchronicity and multivalent layers of reality, like, that just makes a lot more sense than the rays of Saturn, like, making us do shit. No, a sign, I believe. I think. I, it, it, I'm right. <laughs> science is, and I'm reading this directly because I don't know this definition off the top of my head, science is the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Then pseudoscience is a collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being on a scientific method. So from what you can see, science is a study that uses methods in order to falsify what is not the truth or what are not the laws of nature, whereas a pseudoscience is a belief in a system that is not a science when you think that it is a science. So it's a mis it's a misinterpretation of something. And since pseudoscience is practices that are mistakenly regarded as being a science, that's not a declaration of a pseudoscience being good or bad or unworthy. It's simply, simply a categorical error. Categorical error is when we assign things to certain groups mistakenly. So is astrology a pseudoscience? Only if you're claiming that it's a science when it's not. Because astrology is not a science or an art. So let me explain this because I talk about this a lot. A science is using discriminatory processes in order to falsify and order things in order to come to an understanding around truth. Astrology is not really doing that. An art is creating something from nothing. It's pulling creation out of your ass, which could be beautiful, you know, if you're if you're a good artist. Um, and astrology is not really doing that. You can make an argument for both of these, a science and an art being aspects of astrology, but in its purest form, astrology is not a science or an art. So if it's not, then what is it? It's a system of pattern recognition and symbolic synthesis. Let me explain. In astrology, we're looking at particular planetary alignments that we know correlate with specific earthly dynamics. For example, if I see a Mars-Saturn conjunction, the two malefics, um, in someone's seventh house in their natal chart, I'm going to ask them, what troubles do you have around dating or one-to-one -one bonds in your life? Because that's an apparent symbol for that. It's a tool and a system. And astrology doesn't have to be a science or an art in order to be taken seriously. It can be a valid phenomena for what it is. So, astrology is not a pseudoscience unless you're arguing that it's a science. And then in that case, you know, it is a pseudoscience because you're categorically incorrect, but the association of it as a pseudoscience when you understand what it is is also categorically incorrect. So no, astrology is not a pseudoscience, but if you're incorrect in thinking about it, then it might be in your point of view. So if that makes sense to you, or if you disagree, or if you agree about the way that I'm classifying astrology and thinking about it as a system and a tool rather than a science or an art, let me know down below your thoughts about this before we get into the rest of the video. I'm actually interested to hear you know, your comments and your point of view on this thing as someone who is hearing about this. 
So with that out of the way on to why astrology is not a science or an art and not a pseudoscience, let's get into why it may feel pseudo-y to you in terms of resonating. So the first reason why you might not resonate with your chart or with your sun sign is that we are not just one zodiac sign, we are actually an entire natal chart mind blown if you are new here to the astrology world. But a sun sign is one placement out of many. Generally, astrology uses the seven traditional planets, the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, and the three outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And some astrologers use other asteroids and whatnot, but those are currently the planets that are generally used in a natal chart to understand the life dynamics. And these planets are scattered throughout the natal chart in the 12 houses, or so to speak, the planets are showing up in 12 different areas of life designated by each sector. So frankly, no one is going to totally resonate with their sun sign because the sun sign archetype is existing as one small portion of an entire natal chart. Generally, we resonate with a combination of our sun, moon, and rising, also known as the, as the big three, with flavors of our personal planets of Mercury, Venus, and Mars, and sometimes archetypal symbolic resonance with the planets Jupiter or Saturn. So that's like first and foremost when people are like, I don't feel like my sign. I'm like, because you're not one sign. <laughs> but I know that can be new mind-blowing information to people that don't know anything about astrology. So the second reason that you might not resonate with your zodiac sign is because your sun is heavily aspected. So in the natal chart, the planets are always in a conversation with one another. The natal chart is dynamic and these planets are always in a certain condition based around how they're interacting with the other planets in the natal chart. Everything is talking to one another because one energy is going to have a different coordination with another energy, either of harmony or of disharmony. So each planet we can think of as an actor and whether or not they like their fellow castmates of the other planets, those roles that they're playing in the signs will naturally have conflict or ease in the script and the screenplay. So if your son, for example, feels very different from your stereotypical sun sign uh, like description that you're aware of, it likely is being aspected or in a conversation with another planet which is mitigating and changing its manifestation. So for example, you know, let's say you have an Aries sun. The sun is exalted in Aries or it is very healthily supported in the sign of Aries because the sun significations as egoic creativity of showing up in the world for what you want to be seen as being or even the sun can represent the father. All of those things do very well in the cardinal fire sign of Aries that has to do with initiation, being a go-getter and trusting your gut. So let's say that your sun is in Aries, but it's square to Saturn in Capricorn. That is a conversation of tension, which implies hesitation, restraint, and self-deprecation. Those things are going to lead to a more timid or conservative Aries sun, which does still have the semblance of Aries, but is flavored in this square from Saturn. So this may be a concept that is, uh, uh, if you're a beginner to astrology, you're not fully able to conceptualize on your own, but you can think of it as, okay, I have my son in this sign, but it's getting into this duel or this conversation either of ease or of dis-ease with another planet, which is changing that a bit. So a well-versed astrologer or even an astrology enthusiast with um, a basic amount of training can be able to determine the condition of your son and let you know if it's being mitigated by a conversation and aspect with another planet. Then the third and final reason, not final, but the third one that I'm bringing up here is like a basic, you know, video. The third reason that you might not resonate with your zodiac sign is because your sun may not even be representing you in your chart as much as it's representing someone or something else. So this is a big one. Let me explain. The natal chart is not only your psychology. It's rather our entire lives and everything encompassed in that. We are a part of that life and so are so many other people and places and things. So only a small chart, a small part of our chart is actually referring to us, our identity or our physical manifestation of our body, at least in the school of astrology that I'm practicing, that I am speaking about 
about here. So we can tell what the planets represent in the chart based on the signs that they rule. So the sun rules the sign of Leo, so the sun will be the landlord or have the final say over the Leo house in your chart. So in the, I'll give you a quick rundown here of what the houses in your chart mean, just super quickly. So first house, physical body and you. Second house, money and finances. Third house, communication, siblings, travel, short-term travel. Fourth house, home, family, property. Fifth house, children, creativity, romance. Sixth house, health, illness, coworkers, pets, seventh house, relationships and partnerships, eighth house, shared finances and joint assets, ninth house, philosophy, religion, higher spirituality, long distance travel, 10th house, career, reputation, public image, 11th house, friends, hopes, alliances, 12th house, isolation, self, um, self-destructive habits, and aloneness. So based on what house Leo is in your chart, the sun will demonstrate those topics. So this is a more advanced concept, even though it's very basic to astrology. So if the sun is ruling that house, it might, instead of showing up as you, be showing up as what that area of your life is being lit up. That area of your life is being lit up and embodied. So especially if the sun is ruling your angular houses, which are the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth, minus the first because the first house does relate to you. So if it's ruling the fourth, seventh, or tenth relating to home and family, relationships, or career respectively, it is more likely than not not representing you because the angular houses are the most prominent, busy parts of the chart. So if it's ruling one of those areas of your life that have that are not related to you, but ra- or they're related to you, but they are not you, the first house does relate directly to you. But if it's ruling the three other angular angles, one of those angles, so fourth, seventh, or tenth, it's likely showing up really clearly as either your home and family, your relationships, or your career. So respectively, it could totally be referring to those things. So if you don't resonate with your son and you're like, what what does that mean? Where am I in my chart? Where can we show up in our charts? So generally, that is going to be the ruler of your ascendant. Look to the sign on your ascendant, determine what planet rules that sign, and look at where that planet is showing up in your chart. Boom. That is you and your physical body generally showing up in your life as what area you're embodying. So even though we usually do resonate with our sun, often our identity and our physical body more so coincide with the ruler of the ascendant, while the sun is what we want to be seen for being. It can also be, um, it's generally our egoic creativity and our vitality, what we want to be seen for like embodying in the world. It can also be an accidental indicator of the house that Leo rules, or can also represent the father or authority in your life as well. So with all of that now explained and under wraps, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to check out my private astrology consultations, if you want to learn more about your chart, your son, your entire natal chart, you know, all the things, timing, your psychology, your life, everything. Check out my private consultations down below. I would love to read for you. And if you are like, how do I learn these things? Where do I start getting familiar with astro language? How do I, like, where do I start? I have a couple little nuggets of knowledge. How do I grow from here? My Astrology Academy is launching soon at the end of May. So this is a course that will take you from zero to hero, from either not knowing astrology or being confused about a couple different areas, to having a really strong, comprehensive basis to fuel astrology in terms of your life and your practice, if you would like to incorporate it into your career, if you would like to just become astro literate, or if you want to become a professional astrologer, I got you. So down below, everything in the description will take you to learn more about this course. This is the only time I will ever be teaching this live because after this, it will be pre-recorded. So if you want to be a founding member, this is the only time you will be able to learn with me week to week for six to eight weeks, depending on the pace that we end up going at. Only time you'll be able to do this led by me live every week with the Facebook group with questions answered by me. Check that out down below. All we need is your email and you will get the info. Otherwise, make sure that you like, subscribe, and let me know down below how you feel after learning this. If you feel like, okay, that makes sense, why I might not resonate. If you were still a bit confused, you know, let me know. Let me know your questions. Let me know your thoughts, your stories. Otherwise, sending so much love, clarity around this astrology shit, and you know, see you in the next one. There is one thing.